Hello. Just get settled here. Ooh, that was dangerous. Pull myself up here so I can see what we're doing. I can see your comments then. All righty. All righty. Join the live stream. Join the live stream. Okay. Turn the sound off of my iPad so it doesn't echo. <laughs> Hi, everybody. It is so good to be with you guys. I sure missed not doing one last week. That was just hard. Um, we had a, a, a funeral for a, a young lady who passed away in December, uh, my husband's cousin. And it was tragic. And um, it was a very hard thing to watch. Um, but his cousin is doing well, and um, it's it's not going to be an easy thing for them to recoup from that. But she was 31, so very young girl. So how are you all today? I am so excited. It is a beautiful day, and after my chat today, my little my littlest grandbabies are coming over. I haven't seen them in a month because they were gone on vacation for two weeks in Florida. And in Ohio, you have to quarantine for two weeks when you come back from Florida. So I have not seen them since they left for Florida. So they're coming for dinner and I'm super excited. <laughs> I just can't wait to see them. Let's see who's here. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Kay. Hi, Luann. Let's see. Yes, it's beautiful here today too. I know it's supposed to, it was supposed to be stormy and ended up we got storms last night that we weren't supposed to get and nothing today. Hi, Brenda. Hello, Marilyn. Ooh, a couple people from Minnesota. Hi, Kathy, Phyllis. Good to see you all today. I have a tip for you today, but I'm going to wait till 3.15. I'm, what I'm going to do, enough people said that they wish there was a little bit of some kind of tutorial or something with the lives that I thought it would just be like a quick five minute tip that I'd give um, on the live sessions just to you know uh, help the people who really want some content and I know we love our chat um, but some people would like to have some content and I think it would be a fun thing to just come up with a little just a quick little tip it isn't going to be like earth shattering but maybe something you didn't think of before and um, maybe even one of you guys would have one to suggest um, as we go along, but um, I just think it'd be good to do that. So from now on, that's what I'm gonna do, about 15 minutes and I'm gonna do a tip. I'm gonna give people enough time to get in the room and, um, and do that. All right, hi Deborah. good to see you. Hi Alida, Adrian. boy, I haven't seen any of you guys for a long time. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Chris. It feels like forever. I know it was only two weeks. I'd say last week was the only week I didn't do one at all, but um, it was just a crazy week. I had so many deadlines and so many things. I had those three dresses. I finished them all. I can't show them to you yet because they will um, are going to be on um, a guest blog somewhere. So I'm just going to uh, leave it at that. You'll, you will see them this week later. Uh, let's see. Oh, thank you so much, Brenda. I appreciate you too. Um, I really do appreciate each and every one of you guys. It's just like our Facebook group is over, like it's over 800 people now, which just blows my mind. And, you know, I, I try to read everything, but it's kind of beyond what I can read every single thing. So if there's something you really want me to see, please tag me so that I, um, well, my attention will get drawn to it. Um, but I try to go and skim through and see if there's questions. But I just see what I see is people helping each other, which is just great because that's what it's for. So that makes me really happy to facilitate that. And um, you guys are all so great. Sometimes the tips you give um, make me think, yeah, what I was going to say isn't as good as that. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, that's very, very um, 
and it's just very cool for me to see. <laughs> you wish you had some deadlines? Yeah, I, I know. I, I kind of, you know, that's one of the reasons I kind of like pattern testing because it does kind of keep me real. Um, you know, you've got, you know, real deadlines that you have to have something done by and, you know, guest blog posts and um, anything like that I do content wise for love notions or anything you know you've got deadlines and it's really good for me because um, you know I'm I'm not exactly um, what's the word I'm a procrastinator I I just you know I, I would procrastinate everything last night I had the most horrendous night trying to get church online it was awful um, First, we had a hiccup in the worship sound um, when we recorded something happened and it was like frozen but then the all the lyrics were out of sync after that so I had to go try and sync that back up which I spent hours and I still couldn't do it so it ended up with a black screen with the words but you know that's just how it goes and then um, and then YouTube didn't want to finish uploading it it stayed at 95% for like hours so I was up at 4 this morning trying to finish getting church online so if I look a little sleepy that's why <laughs> oh good thank you Brenda I I do um, I do think understanding fabric is like the key to um, a lot of uh, understanding you know, just making your looks, make, making your makes look more professional when you use, you know, the right fabric f for things. Um, do many people order sewing machines off of eBay? I don't know of anyone who has. Um, I know some of the sellers on eBay are, are actually sewing machine companies like Ken Sewing Center is an actual, you know, real um, sewing center. So, I mean, I would guess if it were just a person, maybe I'd be afraid, but um, Ken's is pretty reputable. I mean, I've ordered it like, um, I've not ordered a machine, but I've ordered parts from them. I ordered a binding set for my cover stitch from them, and I have any, it didn't have any issues with delivery or anything. So um, I guess I'd just make sure it was a real brick and mortar place and not like China or something. Let's see. <laughs> Procrastinators unite. You got it. <laughs> yes, Ivy, I work best under pressure. <laughs> For sure. Um, let's see. I'd love to sew, but just too wiped out to focus. Oh, good. <laughs> okay, well, we'll try and keep you awake for an hour. <laughs> okay, let's see. Hi, Paula. Good to see you. How is everything in South Africa, right? I get you and Ingrid mixed up. One of you is from South Africa and one of you is from Sweden. I think you're from Sweden. Which one? <laughs> Help me. <laughs> Sorry. I wish I could remember. Oh, good. $320, boy, did you get a steal. Wow. Don't you love that serger? I have that one, and I just love it. Um, there's only one thing I don't love about it, and I'm going to be doing a review of it pretty soon, but um, the only thing I don't love about it is that it doesn't have seam allowances marked. So you have to measure or eyeball, you know, which is okay, but... It would have been nice if they would have had them marked on that, you know, like the, the bar that was over the next to the knife blade. You know, you could have measurements there like my Janome had, had it there. It would be nice. but And I know the cutting blade adjusts, so but it's not quite the same thing as the seam allowance because sometimes you don't want that wide of a, you know, of a cut, but you want that seam allowance, so... Anyway, that's the only thing I don't like about it. Everything else is absolutely perfect. <laughs> of dress form. Luann, I bought mine just from Joann's, um, or actually Hancock, when they were still open. Um, they were having a sale, and I just bought the Dritz or the Prim or whatever that model was. And I just stuff her, and then I bought a cover from Amazon. Um, 
the cover, the pink is all gone, but um, they do have white and black stretchy covers like that. And the stretchy cover is nice because you can pad it and then, you know, cover it up to hold the padding on. And that way you can make it more your size. <laughs> yeah, I, oh, it's so it's such a great surgery, Brenda. You would absolutely love it. Oh, yeah. Oh, I know. In, in Iowa, you're having all those, you had all those storms and damage. Um, did you suffer any, any damage? Has anyone tried to put three quarters or long sleeves on the new Itch to Stitch Celeste for fall? Oh, no, I ha actually haven't made that one yet. It looks really good, though. Um, I can't imagine it would be that hard to uh, put that. You know what I would suggest is taking another itch to stitch pattern that has a sleeve, and just kind of um, drafting the, um, you know, keep the keep the sleeve cap that it has, but then draft the um, the bottom part of the sleeve from another pattern. It'd be super easy to do. I did that with, um, I made a, uh, the lady gray coat. I don't know if you know what that is from Colette. It's like a tie. It's a really neat coat. I love it. And, um, it has sort of wide sleeves and I didn't really like them. So I took the eight, uh, was it the Adrian coat? See, it starts with an A, another Colette coat that was on there. And I stole the sleeves from that one and uh, it worked out really well. I think if you stay within the same designer, um, it's a little easier to draft one sleeve onto another thing. Sometimes the arm size are even the same, but I wouldn't count on that. But you could at least, you know, do the, after the arm side, then you could draft the rest of it. Does anyone, okay, let's see. What is the machine you are working on? This one here, this is the Skyline 7, my new baby. <laughs> this is the Janome Skyline 7. It is absolutely, I told my husband, you know, he bought this for me with his bonus from work and I was speechless. And every time I use it, like I told him, I didn't even know they could be this good. <laughs> so it has features on it that I never even thought of, you know, that, oh wow that's easy you know so it's phenomenal it's just a wonderful machine I love it so much Chris says she bought a couple of vintage singers sergers and a blind stitch oh wow that's a good idea I bought other things on eBay um, as a photographer I bought a little bit of camera equipment on eBay and not without any trouble I'm about to sell um, one of my professional cameras, my very last one that I have left, but um, I kind of would like to get a video, one that has better video. I was a Nikon girl for my still photography, or I am a Nikon girl, and all my equipment was Nikon, and they're not really the best video. I mean, um, Canon is a little better for video than Nikon, and um, but in my opinion, Nikon was better for still photography, so um, since I'm not doing it professionally anymore, I kind of just want to get a camera that I can use for my channel um, for a second, you know, like a second camera so I don't have to move the tripod every time that I'm doing something else and um, and also just one to, you know, have on vacation. I'd like to have one that has Wi-Fi and stuff so it just goes right to your phone and all that good stuff. Um, so, yes, he is an amazing husband. I agree. He is worth his weight in gold for sure. Well, thank you, Brenda. I don't think I do, but I don't think I deserve it at all, but I'm very happy that I have it. <laughs> um, we didn't, 10 minutes away, devastating. I think all of Iowa is in shock. A estimate now is 1,000 buildings and homes inhabitable. Oh, my gosh. So lucky that our generators, oh my goodness, that's horrible. Is there any practical way we can help out? Um, please post it here if there's a, 
an organization we can either give to or please um, post it here, post it on the Facebook group, because um, I'm sure there's a lot of people who would love to help. Done a couple itch to stitch patterns and all of them end up too big because of my bust measurements. Um, I haven't had that problem with itch to stitch, but um, I don't know if, uh, I don't need a, an FBA, but I do like their C cup instead of the B that um, they're drafted for. Um, but I haven't really had any not turn out um, well, usually people think the bust fits well, so I don't know if you're, maybe if you're small on top, maybe, um, you know, I just, some pet designers just work out better for some people than others. Oh, thank you, Chris. Yes, that, um, I like barely start a knit without using the hump jumper. Um, it just, it stays right here all the time. <laughs> <laughs> because I, if it's thin or knit, it just automatically put it there in the beginning of a seam. Hello from San Antonio, my favorite place. I want to go again so bad. My brother, you know, my family is in San Antonio, Barbara. And um, I really miss my brother. It's been almost a year now since I've been down there. He has, I don't know if you remember when I went for his surgery and I had a little brief um, time away from the channel um, when he had open heart surgery. And um, it was a year ago already, which is just like, I don't know, how, that doesn't seem like a year, but um, we were there in Thanksgiving. So it's coming up on almost a year and hopefully we're, we can go for Thanksgiving. We're not going to fly because we're still a little iffy about flying, but I think we're going to drive down. Um, a lot of it just depends on how safe it is for us to stay in hotels. Not so much worried about us, but my sister-in-law is very handicapped and very frail. So I don't want to, um, she has Parkinson's and I don't want to take a chance of taking anything to her. So if there's any, you know, anything high risk at all we we probably won't go but i'm hoping because i really miss them so much yeah let me know paula um and also you know it's just stitch has a facebook group maybe there's some help on there too for that um the other thing is uh you could um another person who can help you with it's just stitch a lot because she sews a lot of it is um well, both, both Whitney and Karina, my, um, Whitney is Tomcat Stitchery, Karina is Lifting Pins and Needles. They're both good friends of mine. Both of them tested that dress. I did not, um, but they might have a little more wisdom on that actual dress for you. Um, I know Karina does a lot, lot, lot of itch to stitch, so, um, they might have a little more wisdom as far as how they're drafted. Um, I've done only a handful of itch to stitch patterns. Um, I did a jacket. Um, I did the callus bell dress. Um, I've done, what else? There's something else. Anyway, just a handful. So um, I haven't, you know, done near as many of them as some other designers. I want to, though. I love their patterns. Um, and I just... You know, I have way more ideas than time. Is anybody else like that? I just, today I was thinking of another video idea and I jotted it down. And I know it's probably going to be a while before I get around to it. I was thinking about doing a video on just um, surprising things you would find in my sewing room. Let's just say like, um, like Legos. What would I use a Lego for in my sewing room? <laughs> I'll let you chew on that for a while. Um, you know, things like that, what, you know, what, what surprising things that I would have in my sewing room that maybe, you know, I thought it might be kind of a fun video to do. Um, just weird things that I use for things like that. Actually, I'm going to show, share one of them today. Uh, let's see. Hi, Rhonda. Good to see you. Glad you could make it today. Hi, Mary.
up, uh, let's see. Loving family comes with a high price, <laughs> Not, but a worthwhile one. <laughs> see, a post, okay, Facebook too. Communication, very spotty. Oh my goodness. I can only imagine. In um, we, I was in Hurricane Alicia when we lived in Houston, and we had five days with no electricity. We didn't have any like kind of damage like you guys have. I mean, but even that little bit, I mean, we had a tree down, and, you know, there was some damage, damage here and there around the city that I, we lived in Conroe, which is a little north of Houston. And, um, but there was not, you know, the extensive damage like you've had in Iowa. And um, even that was just, it took such a long time to, to get back to normal from that. So I can only imagine how it would be. Um, but yeah, let us know if there's any way we can help. Please do. <laughs> Agreed. Much more than I want to do than I have time and energy for. Hi, Lou. Good to see you. What underwear pattern do I suggest for a high-rise panty that has more ease over the backside? I actually really like the patterns for pirates. Um, I think it's feeling, uh, oh, fierce. They're fierce undies. Feeling frisky is the Ellie and Mac one. Um, they just seem to be cut with a, a nice, generous booty um, that comes well down. Um, it, it does. It isn't cheeky, if you know what I mean. It comes covers the cheeks. And um, the high-rise one is really nice, especially um, I made some with PowerNet. So they're light, it's like a little shaper, but a lightweight, you know, I just lined the undies with PowerNet. So it doesn't really do a lot, but it doesn't just enough. It makes me feel more comfortable um, under some pants and skirts that I have. Red Cross, Iowa. Okay. We'll post the link in the Facebook group if you can. And then that way um, we can um, we can all um, help if we get the word out for you. Hot and rainy. Oh, Little River, South Carolina. Yeah, it's humid, isn't it? I mean, um, here it's nice today, but it's so humid. Like, and I can only imagine down there it's probably even worse. From my home to yours, Mrs. Rodriguez DIYs. Oh, okay. Oh, that's your name. That's cool. Hi, y'all. So glad to be here. Hi, Kim. Hello. How, good to see you. Good to see you. That's a long name. <laughs> Are you Mrs. Rodriguez? <laughs> good to see you. I feel so dumb sometimes when I'm reading something. I think that that's what you typed and it's your name. Pardon me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Nothing like being live, you know. <laughs> Hello, Helen. Good to see you. Oh, you're in Iowa as well. Didn't get the horrible effect of the rest of the state. Some trees down. I'm glad you're okay. So glad. Hmm. Guys, I'm going to be praying for, for everyone there. And um, if there's really specifically places, ways we can help, prayer requests, whatever, please put them in the Facebook group. Um, it's okay. I'm, it's, I, I want to help. So, um, Just got home from church, had to stop and call the police. A man d driving in the neighborhood, driving crazy, swerving from one curbside to the other. Oh my goodness. That's awful. I hope there were no little kids outside. <laughs> oh, you're very welcome, Stephanie. I'm glad that worked out. Some towns are still out of power. Yeah. It, and I didn't even realize, because I haven't had the news on very much, because I'm so tired of politics already, that I've just sort of tuned out the news. And then it wasn't until... I read somebody else on Facebook talk about Iowa that I didn't even realize how bad they'd gotten hit. Horrible. Where I got the cover for my dress form. 
I, may, I don't know if you're the one who emailed me. I got this from Amazon. They don't have a pink one anymore, but they do have white and black. And because um, I just looked it up for somebody else. It is on, um, if you just search for a stretchy mannequin, mannequin cover, I think you'll see it. Um, if you want me to, I can put the link um, here in this, this description of this video after it goes on. Um, but if you just go to Amazon and search stretchy mannequin cover, you'll see it. Hi, hi Becky, nice to see you. Boy, you are the queen of the live sessions. Becky has her own channel and um, she's Aunt Beck, uh, Aunt Beck's Creations there. She has a, her own channel and she is live all the time. I'm impressed. Uh, you just seem to be a natural at it and I just, I always just feel like, <laughs> I'm live. <laughs> oh no, that's going to play back, isn't it? Ugh. <laughs> I am so sick of politics, you guys. I'm going to, like, the Facebook group is is going to be our refuge because it's going to be politics-free. No politics. <laughs> I'm so sick of it already. I mean, I know how I feel. I know, you know, but I don't need to share that with the world. You know, like, I, yeah. Janet, hi Kim, I'm having trouble trying to figure out on the Love Notions Laundry Day Tee how the top back bodice piece is attached to the front piece. The top back bodice piece. The Laundry Day Tee is really just too... Oh, you're talking about the, the piece that folds up and down? So what you do... Um, because the neckline is different, obviously, and from the front to the back. So what they did is they made it so that you could flip one or the other up. So you, if you have the front one here, it's folded down out of the way. And then, then you know, you just tape it with, like with a hinge. So what the, the front one is there, and then when you want to cut the back, you just fold that up and cut the back neckline. hope that helps. But that's, I think, what you're talking about. Is that, is that what you mean? Oh, you're very welcome, Mrs. Rodriguez. <laughs> yep, I'm with you there. The way I see it, I, I don't know what this world's got in store, but I'm glad my citizenship is elsewhere <laughs> in heaven. Let's see. So, Janet, is that what you meant by the front to the back? Um, that piece is not a piece that you cut out. It's It's just the... You just hinge it on the uh, the rest of the where the front and the back are. So hopefully that that helps. Oh, good. I'm glad that helped. Me too. Dot. Hi. Good to see you. I didn't know you were on here. <laughs> good to see you. Let's see. Okay, it's 3:15. I'm gonna share my tip. All right. How many of you guys have had a sticky iron and you? You know, you're, you know you got to clean your iron, but you just want to get, like, something on, that's on there. You just want to get it to glide better real quick without having to go through the whole hassle of cleaning your iron. So the thing to do is, if you have dryer sheets, all right, um, I keep them in my sewing room now. You just take a dryer sheet and you iron it, and it will help your iron glide right over the fabric again without and get rid of all that sticky stuff. Now it doesn't clean it like cleaning your iron does, but it does sort of take care of little, if you have a little bit of fusible something on there that, you know, was makes it not glide real well, that'll take care of it. That is my quick tip. I told you it was gonna be quick, <laughs> but um, it does help. So that's one tip. 
and um, I have a whole bunch of little things like that that I'm planning to just share and in the live sessions just little little things that and I bet you guys have them too so maybe we should all share them <laughs> you know um, because I probably could learn a few things from you guys too Even a use sheet will work. Mm -hmm. I don't use them in my laundry, but I would imagine it would because it's just, um, you know, the same thing that makes your clothes soft is the same thing that makes them glide. Yeah, I, I don't have, I bought these just for my sewing room, and I don't think it matters what brand. I mean, I just bought the Kroger brand um, just because they're cheap and I just have them sitting on the shelf next to my iron usually and um, yeah hello Kate good to see you you're not late it's a drop-in you can come and go <laughs> hi Alberta good to see you I put off cleaning my iron too and you know it works so much better after I do it. I don't know I use the Rowenta stuff that came yeah I mean that well, it didn't come with it but I mean it was a kit that you could get when I made when I bought my iron and um, I use that and I'm almost out of it but I don't know if there's a better cleaner but it works pretty good I guess um, but yeah I want a new iron that's on my wish list I want an Aliso um, I want one of the little ones and one of the big ones. Um, the little one would be so nice to just get in like neck bands and stuff. Um, cause you get that big iron and you're trying to just slip it in there and get a neck band without, you know, without having to turn it every which way. It would be nice. Just out of church. Good. We're still not meeting. We're still, um, because of COVID, we're still not. Uh, hopefully, Labor Day weekend is going to be our first week back at church. So I will be so glad because this editing church and putting it online is getting really difficult. <laughs> Next iron will be the Phillips Azure. Oh, I haven't seen that one. I'm going to look that up, Paula. Wax paper works too. Cool. I keep wax paper here in my sewing room too, so that works. I keep wax paper to stick vinyl designs that I've cut on. That way you can um, cut things and, you know, save them. And then uh, you don't have to apply them right away. Um, because if, you're, if you cut a bunch of things and, you, you know, they're on the sticky um, back, and then you can't let them stick to each other or you never get them apart. So I always put them on wax paper and then that way I can cut as many things as I want to ahead without having to apply them right away because it, the heat press heats up this room so much. So I try to just like save everything and heat it up and do that. I use my heat press for um, interfacing too. It works really well to apply interfacing. Um, if it's one that needs steam, I just spritz it with water, and then it just and it just applies so neat and even. Um, it's really great for interfacing. Linda, you have a um, an Aliso. Uh, I really, they look so nice. I'm gonna. And I'm going to spring for one, I think. I um, have a couple other things that for my sewing room and or channel that I am sort of saving for here and there. I just bought the new iPad. Um, and I'm actually transitioning from a laptop to all iPad, which the new iPad really allows you to do. So I had to, I got the iPad. Now my pencil comes tomorrow. <laughs> I'm excited for that and then um, because you know I love to do fashion sketching so I have the old pencil but that doesn't work on this one and um, 
I am working on uh, that. I want to get a Cricut because my Silhouette does not like to play with Bluetooth. So I've heard that Cricuts are much better for that. So I'm looking for a Cricut maker eventually here. So, you know, you get us all these lists of things to save up for. <laughs> so um, eventually, you know, you always have to have something you're working towards. The, you got the iron, the, the Oliso? Cool. All right. So what's everybody sewing this week? Now that I'm done with all those dresses, I am going to make the Webster top. I have the, I have a slot on the Sew a Top challenge that's going around. I think mine is Tuesday and I'm sewing the Webster top from Cashmere. So you will see that this week and I am guest blogging on uh, Love Notions this week. And let's see, what else am I doing this week? The sew a top. I, oh, I'm testing a pattern for Ellie and Mac this week as well. So I'm busy. <laughs> Lots of things going on. Hi, Ruth. Good to see you. Pattern weights. Oh, cool. Do you have a good, do you have a pattern you like for that, Becky? Um, I, 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 the pattern weights I have, I've had since these pattern weights. I have four of these and baby, they are heavy and they were my mom's. <laughs> so I've had these forever because when I got married, I don't know, somehow I just took them, I think. I'm not sure exactly if she gave them to me, but I took them. <laughs> I'm like, hmm, maybe I wasn't supposed to, but too late now. But anyway, they're wonderful because they're very heavy and they, I like the shape because it, you can sort of smooth things out as you put, put them down. I like them. There's four of those. And then I have little teeny ones that are round to kind of fill in the, like I put them like at corners and stuff like that. You cut out an Adeline by Style Arc. Is that the top with the poofy sleeves? I'm trying to think what the Adeline is. If, it, if it's that top, I love that. My white quilter star reverse lever completely disintegrated, so you're going to learn to use your serger. Yep. You're, um, you will never go back. Sergers are amazing. Which one do you have, Becky? Uh, pattern weights, you don't, well, clips are more for actual sewing. I mean, these kind of clips, I use these more for sewing rather than um, sometimes, sometimes pins work better, sometimes these work better. It just depends. I kind of go back and forth. But um, these I use for actual sewing. The pattern weights are for when you're cutting out. And I like them because, uh, especially for knits, um, if you use pins, you can kind of end up stretching the knits and maybe even snagging them. So I use a rotary cutter and weights only to do knits um, because it's, it just, you don't, you're not stretching the fabric at all to cut then. Janet's making the river top from Megan Nielsen. Oh, that looks cool. I've got, I've got some fabric I thought might work really well for that. Um, and then I saw that olive dress, which actually I'm kind of excited about. That olive dress from Megan Nielsen. Anybody make that yet? Oh, that looks awesome. I want to make that one. Uh, Professor Pincushion is where you learn to make. Oh, okay, cool. I'll have to, I saw that video, I think. Um, I, I subscribed to them, and I think I saw that one go by, and I think it probably played while I was working, and I didn't really. Um, I listened, but not intently. I should go back and watch that again. <laughs> of the t oh, the the top so along. It's it's not a so along actually. It's a challenge. Um, Claire from Penguin and Pear is sponsoring it, and it's um, every day another vlogger doing a a top 
So, and then you kind of do a review and show like if there's any tricky parts to it and that. Um, so my, um, my slot is the 18th. And so I will be doing the Webster top from Cashmere. So this Tuesday is my turn. <laughs> they've already, they've been doing it since the 1st of April. So if you just do hashtag sew a top, you'll see all of them. And there's a ton of really great, uh, top reviews in there and a lot of vloggers you know that are newer maybe that you haven't seen before um, there's some really good people um, new uh, on the internet that you know I didn't know be and so when you follow one of these challenges sometimes you find um, new vloggers that you like um, so that's a that's a good thing to do too to follow one of those Oh, you're sewing with your old faff. You miss your thread cutter. Oh, I do love the thread cutter. I never had one before until I got this. Oh, so lovely. It's such a little thing, but it makes such a big difference. I thought it was maybe dumb to want that, but man, it's really nice. And I don't, um, I'm a notoriously bad at remembering to clip all my threads. So this really keeps me, um, keeps it keeps it nice for me more because <laughs> yeah you love sewing bunny cool you have a white serger that you've had over 30 years wow that's awesome you know if you have something that works there's no reason you know if you love it no reason that you have to upgrade unless there's some feature that you want that you didn't have. Um, I have three machines up here and um, at some point I'll use them all because uh, my Magnolia that I had before I got this, you guys have all seen me sew on Magnolia, um, that one is going to be used to teach my granddaughters to sew. And the old Janome Combi DX that I had from the uh, early 80s is here and it has a serger on the back side. It's the coolest thing. You flip it around and it's a serger on the other side. But it's only a two thread serger so it really isn't that useful. Um, and I really never used the serger on it when it was my main machine. I thought I would but I really didn't. But the the sewing machine part of that is a workhorse. It is so good. It will go through anything, um, but it's all ma manual, everything. There's nothing computerized on it whatsoever. Um, but when I need a top stitch jeans, you know, I'll get that out and set it up and have um, a double needle threaded with top stitch thread. That way I don't have to undo, redo, undo, redo. And I do that all the time. At Christmas time, I've always got both machines going at the same time, maybe with different projects or whatever. Got the Webster pattern last week. So far, I've only printed and taped it. I will now wait until your video. Okay. Yeah. I will, I will be. I've got mine cut out. I haven't. Uh, and just all the only adjustment I made so far is just to lower the dart. Um, but um, I, just, I don't think I'm going to have to do a lot because cashmere is built for a curvy body. So probably won't have to do too much to that one. The Lucy Top from Sonia Estep Designs. Ooh. What's that one look like? I'm going to have to look that up. You guys always give me such great ideas, things I need to look up. <laughs> yes, Janet, you're right. When I go back to my workhorse Janome, I do miss the automatic threader, the cutter, all that stuff. Um, yeah, you really do miss it when you don't have it. Um, this, this is a spoiling machine, let me tell you. The buttonholes this thing makes are so good. I mean, I'm so impressed with the buttonholes because my Magnolia made nice buttonholes, but these are even nicer. They're really nice. You have a national serger. Had about 30 years. There were a sewing machine repair shop that I took my machines to and I asked the man 
which serger he would buy. Hmm. I have never even heard of that brand. Wow. Wow. Huh. My first serger I didn't get until probably five or six years ago. I didn't have a serger that whole time. I sewed for 50 years without a serger. Um, I just, I mean, and I made knits, but, you know, I didn't. Um, that's why I can confidently tell you that you don't absolutely need a serger to sew knits. You, you can do it without, without a serger. It just does make it nicer when you have one. It's a lot easier and um, probably the seams maybe hold better um, because even though you're using zigzags and things like that, um, if you're not careful, you can have some popping and that kind of thing. So I think the serger stretches more even than a zigzag, but that's my opinion. Um, but you certainly can make wonderful things without a serger. Show the neck of the Audrey top. Having trouble with attaching the ties. Sure. I can do that. Um, so what I did with the ties, did you put in, interfacing in them? Because when I added some, it has to be stretch interfacing, obviously, because it's like a neck band that you're stretching to, to make it sort of lay flatter here and then you don't want it to stand up back here. Um, I did interfacing in, I think, only part of it. Like, I think I didn't put interfacing back here. I just put it, like, right here where the ties are. And um, I think that made it a little bit easier. And then you have to, um, you have to fold over that little part um, that separates where the ties are. And that's um, that's easy. It, I'll show you. Um, I'm trying to think if I maybe I can find some fabric and make a long sleeve one for myself for winter, and then I can show you. Um, give me a, a week or so, and I will um, pull out a pull out some fabric and maybe make myself one for fall, so you can see. What is a good serger for a beginner? Um, I think any basic serger, I don't think there's a whole lot of difference between them as far as using them for a beginner or not. Um, if you want one that's easy, um, threading is an issue sometimes. Um, the first serger I had, I, it, it nearly made its way to the front yard <laughs> several times before I finally figured out that you could tie them on and, and pull them through and not have to re-thread re it every single time. Um, it could be a bear to thread. This one threads itself, which is amazing, amazing, amazing. Um, so if you, if that bothers you, um, if you don't, you know, if you don't want to be frustrated with threading, it's worth the money to get one that's air threaded. So there's a Juki, there's a Janome, and there's Baby Lock. And I don't know if there's any others that are air, maybe Elna, is there an Elna air threaded one? Anyway, those all have air threaded models. Um, Baby Lock's probably had it, as far as between Janome and Baby Lock, Baby Lock's had it longer. Although my sewing machine guy did tell me that Juki is the one that patented the technology for it. So, and I believe that because this is really good. I have this, the Juki one and it's really, really good. Uh, let's see. I sew knit t-shirts on a sewing machine, but never looks as nice as Surge one seemed to. Um, I think they can look just as nice but the insides, you know, the serge seams just look, they look more like ready to wear, basically, because serger is what they use on that. But I don't know, I think they can look pretty nice. Hi, Cynthia, good to see you. You know, that, that brother is a nice entry level serger because it's, um, you know, it's, it's not as expensive as some, so, 
that might be a good way to go. Um, I've heard really good things about that. I haven't had one, but I do have the sort of same line of, and I have the cover stitch. And honestly, that cover stitch is amazing. It was only $300, and it's amazing. So I'm, like, really impressed with it. So Bernina came out with an air-threaded serger. Okay. I think I heard that the... Um, <laughs> I.O. <owe>, Virginia. <laughs> if, you, if you're a Buckeye fan, then you know what we're doing here. O-H-I-O. Um, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, the air, air threading is really nice. And I think I just heard that they, the whatever patent, Baby, Baby Lock had some kind of a patent on their technology or something, and now, like, it's available for everybody. So probably be more widespread on more machines. Yeah, that's Alberta. That's what I was doing with my Janome. But isn't there every once in a while it just it comes untied right at the last minute or yeah. <laughs> okay, you can sew knits. We'll hold your hand. It's not that hard. It's actually um I'd rather sew a knit than anything else. Um, actually, what I always say is I like to sew wovens and I like to sew knits, the both of them. I you like them equally as well to sew, but I like to wear knits, you know, so because they're so good, you know, comfortable to wear. So they're worth the time to learn how to do it. And once you do, you'll, oh man, you'll never stop because they're really quick. You can throw a knit t-shirt together in two hours you know, um, pretty easily. Detected at the front door. I guess there's somebody at my front door, but my husband's downstairs. <laughs> Sorry about the interruption. <laughs> I don't know if y'all heard that or not, but Alexa just told me there was someone at the front door. Paula loves her baby. Like, people who have baby locks swear by them. That's, I have a friend who has only baby lock and she swears by them. I couldn't get by past the price. I. You know, um, I started with Janome, and I love them, so I've never really looked at any other brand of um, sewing machine. But with the serger, um, I read things about Janome, um, I mean with the cover stitch, that, that it, they were having issues with skip stitches, so I didn't want to get that one. Um, so I just got the entry-level brother one because it I didn't know how much I would use it. Well, I'm using it a lot, and I actually really like this serger or that cover stitch. And then I saw this air threaded juki at my sewing machine um, repair man when I took my machines in to be cleaned, and I've been like wanting it forever. So <laughs> I finally bought it. Oh, I'm sorry. Just keep practicing. Just the main thing with a hem is try not to stretch it, because if you stretch it while you're doing it, um, it's going to get all wonky. So just try not to stretch it. Did you, and use the Sok Easy tape or or make your own like I do, um, something to stabilize um, the hem, and I think you'll have better luck. Do you have a hump jumper, Kate? Because that'll help you not to eat, help it not to eat your fabric. Yeah, people say baby locks last forever. You can buy them secondhand, and they're still really good. I saw that. I saw on Amazon because I added it to my Amazon influencer shop, um, and I saw that it was over four hundred dollars. But I think it just kind of fluctuates might have something to do with um because the sewing machine repair guy that you know i told you about i bought when i bought this machine he told me that he can't keep entry level machines in stock they just fly out and he said and and sergers you know the inexpensive ones he can't keep them in the shop like they're they're just not they're hard they're, there's huge demand and i guess I think it might be because people are sewing masks. I don't know, maybe that's why, but they're just enough. Another friend of mine put her sewing machine on Facebook 
marketplace to just sell it and it was gone in like an hour. Somebody snapped it up. But I think people are buying them to make masks. You tried the hump jumper. Hmm. Um, well, maybe, uh, I don't know if I have any little knit here that I could show you. Let me get a scrap of knit. Maybe I can show you starting a knit. If you can see, I don't know if you'll be able to see really well there, but. Okay, I have a little scrap of knit here. Hopefully this will help, I, I don't know. But let's pretend we have a, a seam here. I always unplug my machine because if you have a power surge, I actually had a, I had a beautiful Viking machine a long time ago that was fried in a power surge, so I always unplug it. All right, so we're just gonna pretend that we're gonna start a seam. And so what I do is I put the needle in. Let me, let me back up here, choose a narrow zigzag, put the needle in, and then I just slide the hump jumper all the way up can you see that? Can you see how I have that all the way up? And make sure there's plenty of room for your zigzag. And then put your presser foot down. And then just slow, start slowly. And then pretty soon that'll fall out and you'll be left with just sewing your, your hem. But just don't stretch it while you're doing it. I know that isn't very close up, but hopefully, if you could see how I had the hump jumper like all the way up underneath the presser foot, because um, what that does, it's, it's, it gives the teeth something to grab other than the fabric. So try that, I don't know. Maybe you did just that, I don't know, but anyway, maybe that'll help, I don't know. Um, this, is in the, this is a little bit thicker probably too, so that makes a difference, but um, I don't know. Uh, hopefully that helps. Oh, maybe, uh, actually lengthening your stitch length will help you a lot too with that. If you have the stitch length really short, it will have more of a tendency to, you know, pull down into the thing. And, and you know, with knits, you can't, you can't really put the, the single hole needle plate on because you need the zigzags. So, um, and that's what they tell you to do with, you know, chiffons and stuff like that. But you can't really do that with a knit, so. Four spools of maxi lock thread on. Wow, that's a good, that's a good price. I got some from Wowak for a dollar ninety nine. I think that's pretty good too. Three hundred and seventy three masks, Diane. Oh my goodness. Wow. <laughs> you know, um, Kay, I don't care if. Um, I, all three of spools match um, for the cover stitch. I just make sure, I, in fact, I use either white, black, or gray in the looper, always. Um, and then as long as those two threads match, and you can use a bobbin. So you can wind a bobbin um, and use a bobbin as your second one. Um, it does stay, um, at least mine does, it does stay down there and 
and works pretty well. And I've done that a lot um, because I don't always want to buy two spools of every color of thread. So um, I'll use a bobbin. Sometimes I'll, you know, a lot of times you're, you're um, doing your sewing, you're, um, you're doing your cover stitching after you're done sewing. So I'll just take the bobbin out that I had of that same color and so the bobbin and the spool and go over to the cover stitch. And then on the looper, you can just use, you know, anything that, was, you know, I wouldn't use black on white fabric, but, you know, you, you can use something neutral um, because it doesn't show through. Hopefully that helps. Yeah, wowex has been having that maxi lock on sale for a while. Um, their shipping can be high, so save it up. <laughs> um, but their prices are so good, it's worth it um, for sure. Good. Let me know, Kate. If you're on the Facebook group, um, we can, you know, zoom in and help you a little more. Um, and, uh, make, you know, just go ahead and post on the Facebook group. And if you're having difficulties, let me know. Um, if you've got, if you post something on Facebook, because we're getting big, we have 800 and some members on Facebook now. So we're getting pretty big. So if there's something you guys want me to see for sure, please tag me so that I know to go look at it because it's really hard to keep up on every single post. So please tag me. Um, yes, you can do that too. Cynthia's got a great point. Um, use a little scrap to get, the, to get it going. That works too. Um, you just put a little scrap underneath. You can use like a, a quilter's cotton or anything and then just pull it, you know, it'll, once it's started, it's fine. Allegra shorts, ooh, in linen, wow. I wanna see them, Christy. Oh, wow, that's awesome. See, Aunt Beck always uses a feeder piece of fabric awesome. Patience, yes, mine too, Kate. I, I totally get that. I'm definitely guilty of not being patient. Baby Lock Accolade. Hmm, I don't know if that model, but you've not, okay, well, I'm going to do um, it's coming up in the uh, knit thing that I'm doing. I'm going to do serger basics. They'll be pretty basic because I don't do a whole lot of tricks with my serger, but um, I'm just going to, you know, go over what, what each spool of thread does and, you know, what it can do and, um, you know, just different ways to uh, make serging a little bit more. Um, it, it can be daunting at first. I remember when I first got mine, I was like, this, I'm never going to get this thing threaded right. <laughs> you know, just uh, when I first got my first one. Um, but once you understand what they do and what the common problems are, um, it's pretty, you know, they're pretty, they're just like sewing machines. Pretty, pretty easy to figure out. Kate, um, stitch length. For the narrow zigzag, I would do maybe a 2.8 to 3. Um, I have mine set here for 2.1, but I usually end up lengthening it. 2.5 or greater, I think, is what the length that I would do. Um, because you don't want it to be um, too tight. Um, but you also don't, you know, you don't want it super loose. But anything under 3 is okay as long as it's... Um, as long as it's not, you know, coming apart. Knits are just hard. Keep practicing. Yeah, you know, they're worth the time too, Christy, because remember how comfortable it is to wear a knit. So if you really want to move toward a me-made wardrobe, you know, mastering knits is, is really important. So I want to help you. So, you know, continue to ask questions um, on the Facebook group. Um, I'll, like I said, tag me and I will, you know, hone in and try to help you. And there are so many people on the group who are so helpful too. So, um, feel free to reach out because we'll, we'll help you get there. We'll hold your hand until you can do it. 
and then you can hold somebody else's hand. That's what it's all about. Recommendations for a starter serger that's good quality but not expensive. Um, someone else was talking about that Brother 1034D. I think that was the number. I've heard good things about that. Um, you know, picking up a used one is probably good. Um, you know, just, I don't know, I don't know how inexpensive you want to go. Um, my Juki that I just bought was just under a thousand, so that was pretty good. Um, for that, for what it is, it's very good. It's an air threaded serger and everything. Um, <laughs> See, Renee, I have a serger and use it often. Those of you who have a cover stitch, do you use it often? You know, Renee, I just got mine, you know, like a couple months ago, and I am finding m more and more I love using it. Um, I use it a lot when I, like, make underwear, um, kids' uh, clothes a lot. I've used it, you know, for hemming. Um, I think I use it at least once on every garment. So yeah, I think it's worth it. Um, I, that's why I bought the cheaper brother one because I just wasn't sure how much I would use one. And I do. I use it all the time. So um, I think it's worth it. Sergers are terrorizing. There's too much going on at once for me. <laughs> they, can, they can feel like that for sure. But... Um, It's worth the time, though, because they really are great. Yeah, I, you know, I didn't think I'd use the cover stitch as much as I do. So what I'm dying to do is use the, the reverse cover stitch on something. Because um, if you, you know, the backside's kind of cool looking. And a lot of athletic wear, you know, uses that as the, um, like a decorative thing. So um, I might... Uh, try that at some point to, you know, put a decorative spin on something, uh, maybe a t-shirt neckline or hem or something. I'm not sure, um, but it would be really cool. Maybe that'd be kind of cool between some color blocking, um, maybe having the, the uh, looper and the threads being different colors so that it kind of ties it together. You could do or something like that. It could be a fun, fun experimenting. Cynthia. Huh, interesting. I want to know, Cynthia, too, what, what makes it better. Brenda says, I worked at the Fruit of the Loom for eight years, sewed men's brief, got very custom to the serger. I'm sure you did. So I'm sure they... Um, I'm sure, I know those are surged everywhere. I bet that would be really interesting. Uh, you would learn a lot, I think, working in a job like that. You probably can sew knits in your sleep after that. Um, men's briefs, boy, you have to be so careful to make sure that there's nothing irritating or, um, yeah, I haven't done that. Um, kind of a afraid to do men's briefs because I don't want my I don't want to cause my husband to have um, something uncomfortable so I've been like a little afraid to do that but you could do that mm -hmm. yes you can Oh, that's cool. Baby quilts for charity. Yeah, I use my sur serger for wovens all the time. Yep, for sure. <laughs> women? Why are you using on women, too? <laughs> Women's clothes? <laughs> I do both in my serger. Yes, so do I, Cynthia. <laughs> Brothers easier to thread. Hmm. Interesting. 
I have heard that that 1034D is pretty easy to thread. My Janome that I had before this air threaded one was not easy to thread. It was a total bear. It was the model that was made just for Hancock fabrics. So it was inexpensive. It was something we, we, I was shopping. My husband saw me looking at it and said, would you like to have that? And I said, yes, I would. So he bought it for me. I didn't do any research ahead of time. I just got a surgery that day. <laughs> and um, I had been looking at them and I knew I couldn't probably afford a whole lot more than that. So I was very happy with it for a very long time, but it was a bear to thread. That's the only thing. And before I got this new one, it was starting to run rough. Um, I think probably it just needs to be serviced and it would probably have been all right, but I really wanted the air threaded one. Um, so I went and bought a new one. Um, I had been saving up my money from the channel to buy a new serger, so I did. Yes, Cynthia, that's the same one I have. I love it. Love it, love it. Jumpsuits and play suits. Who has made some? I love them. Becky, I've made a bunch. Um, I think they're comfortable if you make them to fit. I think the only time they don't aren't comfortable is if they don't fit. So I would say um, take the time to... What I do is I fit the top, I fit the bottom. I make sure that the top is extra long, okay? And then I put the top on, I put the bottom on, I take a piece of elastic and put the waist where it's comfortable and then I mark both of them and I know exactly where that waistline needs to be. It's, it's pretty like, I know it sounds really like simplistic, but honestly it's foolproof every time. You get the rise right, you get, you know, and you've, you've got that. to um, add elastic to the neckline so that the clear elastic to strengthen the neckline because you're pulling it on and off all the time and um, stretching it over hips. And if you don't add something to it, it could stretch out. Um, it probably would go back after you washed it, but you don't want it to stretch out while you're wearing it. And the clear elastic does a really good job of making, helping that not to happen. So, uh-oh, no sound. What happened? I don't know. Huh. Let me see. Can you hear now? Can you hear me now? Huh, I wonder what happened. This this thing is really long, this uh, lapel mic thing. And um, it was dangling and maybe I ran over it with my chair or something. <laughs> huh, I might have just been out for a minute because this was dangling. So sorry about that, guys. Hey, it's four o'clock and I'm gonna have my little grandkids here at 4.15. So I'm gonna probably be um, wrapping up our chat here. Does anybody have questions before we sign off? But the, Paula, you can mix sizes with a jumpsuit though. So you could do that. I'm bottom heavy. <laughs> Thank you. It's so good to see you guys. Um, I enjoy 
this time with you guys more than you realize. And um, it makes me feel like I'm really a part of y'all. So um, please have a good week. And um, I have two pretty cool videos coming up this week. Uh, the Cashmere at Webster. And... Uh, a guest blog post for Love Notions, which is going to coincide with a video from me, which will have a tutorial on um, what I'm showing on the Love Notions blog. So I'm going to explain it on the blog and follow it up with a video um, on my channel so that you can both see it written and video. All right, you guys have a fantastic week. I will see you again next Sunday, um, Lord willing. I don't think there's anything going on. Every once in a while, you know, there's family stuff on Sundays, and then I have to postpone it till Monday. But this week, I don't think there's anything again, so that's good. And I look forward to it. I like it when it's Sunday because it's a nice way to spend Sunday afternoon. Have a fantastic week. I will see you all soon. God bless.